Put him to death. What did we do today? Warn you, ain't you better repent for the Lord. Show back up. Mm. Ain't no root cause for being a king. Mm. <laughs> Unrepentant of the cause that he That's right. Oh, no one repent of idolaters, adulterers, murderers, drunkards. Mm. Everything. Drunkards, all of them. That what that mean? We all got work to do here. That's right. We somewhere on that list somewhere. Mm. Somewhere. Some got <laughs> Some got Right here, some. Chapter 5, verse 1. Right. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Um, so you believe that the Son of God is the anointed. Christ means anointed. That means you're born of the Most High. See, remember he told Peter, flesh and blood that revealed it to you. That's right. right. My father told you that. Right. So after, after a while, it's passed on the, after we go through this lesson today, if they ain't called by the Lord, they ain't going to get it anyway. That's right. We're going to do 100 scriptures with it. Yeah, this if it ain't, hey, if you ain't called by the Lord, you ain't gonna get it anyway. Yeah. Come on, bro. And every first John chapter five, five. Just read through what love is, and then you know you go home to study these things and you know work on your love. Love's an action. God is love, but what is love? That's right. God got wrath too. God got hatred too. Sure does. See that? He's violent. You act like the Lord just, just, just skimming through flowers in heaven and just, you know, didn't uh, he do? You know, uh, right. you, you know he got he owns a lake of fire too. Oh. <laughs> you need to know that. Like, yeah, I, right. I mean, I, I don't like being hot. Right. <laughs> All right, come on, bro. First John chapter five verse one again. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. So if you love the Son, you love the Father. Mm, period. Some brothers think they can just, just leapfrog the Messiah and just, I don't want to deal with him, dog. I just want to deal with the most high around. Right. Meanwhile, on your level, you own the line. You can't even do that. Mm. that so, so, okay, send a letter to Barack Obama say, dog, you need to holler at you. <laughs> who, who you going to holler at? Somebody he send you to speak for. Him. You can't even do that to her. Right. <laughs> then you can do that with the most high. Right. So long, y'all. Come on, brother. Verse 2. Yeah. By this we know that we love the children of God. Right. When we love God. Uh huh. And keep his commands. Is this New Testament we read? Mm -hmm. There it go again. Love is keeping of the commandments. That means you need to know what the commandments are so you can start applying. That's right. Come on, brother. Let me say this word over Valley. It's in doctrine out there too that well, Christ said keep the commandments. Commandments are not law. Huh? You don't hear that. Huh? What is it? Advice? Yes. Yeah, so so <laughs> the next question you would ask, well, what happens if you don't keep a command? Well, that's sin. Well, what is sin? <laughs> According to the Bible, sin is transgression of the law. So a commandment is law. Because there has to be something if you don't do it. If there's no punishment or there's no retribution or correction if you don't keep it, what's the deal? Right. Well, what does it matter to me if ain't nothing going to happen? Right. It don't matter. It don't matter. So what would be the commandments of the Lord? His will. Well, what is his will? Doing right. Well, what is doing right called? What if I do wrong? What's that called? And the minute they say sin, then you're right back to what's the definition of sin. sin. It's, which is what? Transgression. Transgression of the law. So law and commandments are the same thing. But then they'll try to throw that at you, y'all. So you just keep working them to, to the part of what happens if I don't keep Also, Y'all write that down, y'all. First John 3 and 4. Romans 4 and 15, definition of sin. Also, to add to that, uh, they'll, they'll sometimes say, well, that's when you do something that's unrighteous. Yeah, right. Now, 1 right. John, first John chapter 5, verse 17, write that down and tell you all unrighteousness is sin. Right. right so write that down. And what is sin? Transgression of the law. See, you ain't going to be able to get rid of it. <laughs> see, see, because if you get rid of the law, then sin is gone. 
from any of these new jacks as well. That's right. Elijah Muhammad, you know, that's one of the boys with the bow ties in the corner. Yeah. You get a final call newspaper, flip it in the back. They, they, they try to tell you Elijah Muhammad, whose grave uh, mark is in Chicago to this very day, is Jesus the Christ. They believe that. See that? Farrakhan mixing the Islam with Scientology. Now, two of them over there know that. Mm. Mixing his doctors now with Scientology. Still fans right oh, uh, David Koresh, Jim Jones. Uh, many people. The boy in New York claiming he got all the spirit. Uh, 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 the boy that was down here trying to trying to defend his Lord good. Yeah. Uh, Yulon Mitchell. Yeah. Yahweh been Yahweh. Uh, uh, ben Ami over the Demona Desert. There's many men stepping up claiming they the Messiah sent by the Lord. The Messiah. Like uh, many of our people were anointed, but they're not the anointed. Right. The one that was spoken of. See, that David was anointed. Moses was anointed, but they weren't the anointed, because they all were speaking about somebody else that was gone. And they all seen. Exactly. Well, let's get this. Luke 24, chapter 24, verse 25. Yes, sir. Then he said unto them, O fool, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Is that red letter? Mm -hmm. It's the Son of God talking. They didn't even know he had already resurrected. He was, he was walking with them. They didn't recognize him. Don't look out so hard. Why y'all not believe in the prophets? Come on, bro. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Mm. And beginning at Moses. Beginning where? At Moses. Where Moses started? Who knows? Mm. Who knows? Who say? Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, absolutely. First book of the Bible. So it say beginning at Moses. Come on, bro. And all the prophets. And everybody else behind Moses. Come on. He expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. Oh, okay. Jump down to verse 44 for us. 44 to 45. Verse 44. See what the Messiah did? He went to that Old Testament and proved he was him. Come on, brother. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses mm. and in the prophets and in the Psalms mm. concerning me. That's red letter. Jesus Christ talked. Say, you want to find me going back to that Old Testament. The very Old Testament most people tell you stay out of it. Mm. That's that Old Testament. That's that Old Testament regalia, silly. That's that away with They tell you that. But the Lord proved he was him through the prophecies that was already written down by him. And even in the prophecies, he's talking about his return. Has he returned yet? Mm. He came to away with it. His return is even in the Old Testament. Mm. Really? Come on, bro. Then open he their understanding, uh -huh. that they might understand the scripture. Okay, let's get another witness on this. Acts, 20, Acts chapter 28. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 28. 20, 23, one of brother grab. You see that? See, we going into these scriptures. And it's a piggyback session off what last week's class we had. That's right. Because a recent way with brethren denied the Lord. But couldn't answer none of these scriptures. None. See that? And that's a serious thing because the scripture tells you if you're not a son, you don't have a father. Right. Rain, brother, is it like that? Yeah, is that serious? <laughs> you didn't take, you didn't get beat down like that for you to play around. Oh, that's nothing. I could have took that really. District 7, bend in the corner and you're throwing your guns under the car. Right. Huh? What do you mean you could have took that? What you running for the police for? Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that three. Crucified. The worst form of torture known to man. Crucified. You see that? Right. Suffocated on, the, on in his own blood. Y'all hear that? They tell you in Isaiah 52, his, his outer appearance was more more than any man ever. Mm. He didn't take that just for you to play around and say, okay, but that wasn't him. He never existed. All right, let's get this, brother. Acts 28. Acts 28, verse 20. Acts 28, verse 20. Okay, well, you know, it, it does say an eight. I just got a bad break. Oh. <laughs> Put a little hook down there. <laughs> He is not a scribe. No, I'm not a scribe. <laughs> <laughs> Acts chapter 28, 
38, verse 20. Yes, sir. For this cause, therefore, I call for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. That's Paul right there. There's another doctor. They don't matter. Israel done away with. Paul locked up. Say, look, I'm locked up for these Israelites, man. Right. Because he himself was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. They used to the Israelite people think you talk Chinese. I was there when they mentioned all the Bible. What you mean? Uh, Israel who? Right, Israel who? Are you Jewish? Come on, bro. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee, but we desire to hear of thee. What thou thinkest? For as concerning this sect, we know we know that every word it is spoken against. What would a sect mean? You see that? They were called the followers of Christ. A sect back then. Go to crew and say, guess what? It's evil spoken against everyone. So, okay, turn on BET tomorrow. Huh? Watch church service and see if it's evil spoken against. What happened in 2,000 years? How they was in the Roman Empire shaking up the very core of the Roman Empire, right, teaching right. about the real Christ, and then you fast forward today, it's all love, flowers, and candy. Right. What happened? Right. Who crept in? See, something happened. You ain't know your history. Something happened mm -hmm. to where they start compromising the teachings of the historical Jesus with pagan arts. Paganism. See that? They formed your religion called Christianity, which is a word that can't even be found in the Bible. 325 AD. We get your whole Roman Catholic dogma from. That's right. They come up with the Bible, then they came up with Roman Catholic canons. Hail Marys. See that? Oh, why do you think they come out of here? Who ever been to a Catholic service in there? Do they come out of this? No, no they come out of this. Every Sunday
Chinese, no, they Chinese. Am I going, am I? And you add any African, where you from an African, gonna tell you Rhodesia. Kenya. <laughs> what about you? Negro, <laughs> man. <laughs> And when they had appointed him a day, uh -huh. there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, uh -huh. persuading them concerning Jesus, uh -huh. Yahweh Shai, uh -huh. Jesus, Yahweh Shai, right. both out of the law of Moses uh -oh. and out of the prophets, uh -huh. from morning till evening. Mm. You see that? Oh, Paul was in the, that Old Testament proof that Jesus and Nazareth was in the Messiah. And he was spitting all day. The day he run out of gas. Start yawning, tired. Yeah. Alright, that's enough. Right. That brother was in the spirit. That's right. He going to remember he was a non-messianic for the Lord Black. That's right. On his road to Damascus. So he was an expert in that old test. He's like, oh, right there, let's talk about him. Right there, right there, right there. Right. Like we about to do today. See that? To put the nail in the coffin on this non-messianic spirit. Please. To put the nail in the coffin. We went over a little bit last week. We better go into these prophecies now because we see in Luke 24, Christ resurrected. He went to Moses and the prophets and opened up their understanding concerning the things concerning him. He showed them over here that's talking about me, over here that's talking about me. See what David was talking about, that's talking about me. Paul did the same thing in Acts. So as we, as followers of the Lord, we say, Look, I believe in Jesus, I follow Christ, you can have to show the world why. And people say, yo, mama told you so. Mm -hmm. How you gonna convince somebody in the streets to get out the streets? Mm -hmm. Oh, for her to stop being a whore or hook. How you gonna do that? Without you, you have to show them something. Right? right? right. Oh, you just believe that it's past all that's wicked. Yeah. Complain. Right. These men went to the Old Testament to show how Christ is Christ. Shouldn't we be able to do the same thing? Yes, uh, right. Let's do it. Let's start out Genesis 49. Right. <laughs> Genesis 49. Let's go back to Moses. Genesis 49. Genesis 49. And y'all understand that when he's saying Moses, Moses was took up on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights and shown everything from Genesis to Revelation. Moses wasn't alive then, but he was given all, told what Enoch did, told all of the writings up to that, what Methuselah did, all of that, the writings of Adam, and Moses summarized them all the way up to Mount Sinai. There's other lost books that go into day-to-day -day details, the Book of Jazz, the Book of Jubilee. All of these books are mentioned in the Bible to study from. So, y'all, they get into day-to-day -day detail, but from Moses on up to the point, because what he gave them was the same laws that's in the heaven. So if you say you're going to heaven, guess what's going to be that way? No. <laughs> the same thing you say is done away with if you believe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's get this. Genesis 49. Genesis means the beginning. Like the brother just said, somebody, just somebody asked me, well, how was Moses able to write about the Lord? Mm -hmm. He wasn't born yet. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. Can the story <laughs> be older? Then the author. He's like, dang, that's a good boy. No, it ain't. What you mean? <laughs> what you mean, good boy? No, ain't good. You feel me? You'll never get an opposition, no score, zero. What you mean, right. good point? What you need to do is go study. How was Moses able to write about the beginning? And he wasn't done. What happened? What happened? The Lord had Moses up on that mountain 14 days and 40 nights. It took him that long to give him 10 commandments? Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Mm. Second Ezra in the Apoph, chapter 14. Apoph was part of the 1611. King James Bible. Right. It's all under one cover, one of the first books. All right? Apoph was in here. Second Ezra 14. Let me read this real quick for y'all. Second Ezra 14, verse 4. And I sent him, I'm going to start over verse 1. And it came to pass upon the third day. This is Ezra in the Bible talk. I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me, and said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses, 
and talk with him when my people served in Egypt. Mm. Right? And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai, where I held him by me a long season and told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the time and the end and commanded him safe. Mm. See that? Moses got shown the secrets of the time, the history of the world, and the end. The beginning to the end. That's how you're able to write about the beginning. He wasn't there yet. That's right. See that? You gotta be able to ask. Again, the second Nazareth. 14. One to five. That's your scriptural chop for those that ask you, well, how was Moses writing about the beginning? And right. he wasn't there. Was Moses in the garden of Eden with a servant? Have an and write down Jubilee chapter 2. Alright, look at this Genesis. Genesis chapter 49. And if you're not studied up in that area, don't, don't pick up a page. Right. Don't take that up. Because then you do a disservice to the most high. Ooh, right. Straight disservice. You don't know what you're talking about with what? <laughs> <laughs> Study right. up and then come on back to you. Right. Yeah. Right. You have to be fully persuaded in your mind. If you're trying to teach and scratch a hole in your head. That's gonna be a problem. Don't <laughs> 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 say sanctify the Lord in your own heart. Yeah, right. right. They're like, bro, it look like you need some more study. And by the way, it takes all this slope for eight. Alright, Genesis 49. Most of Genesis, right? Let's get to it. Let's go to the prophecies of Messiah. See where we stand at. And for anybody telling y'all that he don't exist, or he never showed up, make, have them answer all these scriptures with the Old Testament on. You're going to see they ain't going to be able to do it. You ain't going to be able to do it. Let's find out what tribe from the side got to come out of. Let's get it done. Genesis 49, start at verse 8, bro. And this is the account of Jacob telling his sons what would happen to them in the last days. Judah was the fourth born son of Jacob. That's right. Judah was a man, all right? He had children, and they became a one tribe out of the 12 tribes of Israel, the fourth tribe. Genesis 49. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 8. Yes, sir. Uh, Judah, thou art whom he, I mean, Judah. Thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Shall praise. Judah actually means praise of the Lord. That's right, boy. Judah or Yahweh God. That's Hebrew. Judah. It means praise of the Lord. Mm -hmm. His mother had him in Genesis 29, named him Judah. Praise the Lord. All right? Come on, brother. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Mm -hmm. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. That means your hands should be in the neck of your You know exactly what it means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what that mean, brother? Yeah. Come on, come on. Anybody? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, you always you in a position to take your enemy out. Actually. You always, you trip off these kingdoms like uh Babylon, Daniel was high rank. You feel me? What we at now? Holding power with them. That's right. Always, it's always a uh, Negro somewhere high up in the door. That's right. Uh, that really can bring down this beast if they wanted to. That's right. Right, but prophecy got to fulfill. But your hands should be in the neck of your enemy. We always be in a position to take our enemy down. But we divided some of us up with Tom's. Film, bootleggers. So, you know, the prophecy got to play out. Oh, right. Come on, brother. Right. So it's not. Yeah. Judah is the lion's wealth right. from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. He couched, he couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Now, we profess that we ought to try with Judah here in the world. That's right. Remember, a lot of these elders that were born back in the 60s, these are people standing up, mm. like, like nationwide standing up. Flat out. But they do. They came out with super fly. Uh, brought the dope out, then after the super fly, the games, colors, scripts of blood, right. men's society, boys in the hood, 90s, hot boys, 2000, and it goes on. You feel me? But who the question was, who gonna rouse him up? That's right. See all these killings of our people now? That's right. That boy just got killed for playing his music too loud. That's right. Huh? 
Trayvon Martin, huh? He tried to let him go. You should have none assurance in your life. See, but the question is, who gonna rouse them up? Because it was a time when y'all was together. You know, we was, we was tripping our belief in God. Back in the 60s, we was together. That's right. Standing strong. You see what I'm saying? The question is, who gonna rouse them up? There's only one that's gonna rouse you up. That's right. All right, come on, brother. Verse 10. Yeah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Scepter means rulership. Judah, come on. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet.